So Stacy wants to know about protein powders. I just mentioned Stacy, so maybe we'll put a link up for you. Um, I have two versions. I have an organic version uh, for ve for vegetarians and vegans called Ultra Protein. Uh, Ultra Protein that you can use as a protein powder supplemental. And again, this is for vegetarian those of you who aren't or aren't eating animal. And then I have another one. Uh, we'll put that over here. Ultra Pure Protein. And this one is a beef protein, grass-fed organic beef protein. And so if you're not on a vegetarian diet and you want high nitrogen, high um, amino acid profile protein, this is a really good option for supplementals. Okay, let's see here. So I, another question, what's the best product that, that, that I would recommend for people to buy in this scenario? There's not one. I, I'd say that if you're looking to protect yourself and support your immune system for, for a virus, if you could only do one thing, um, I'd probably recommend Virid, V-I-R-I-D. Um, it, it's a um, formula that contains a lot of different agents, including zinc and vitamin A and echinacea and elderberry. Uh, so some of the things we talked about in in the last episode of Pig Dr. Osborne's Brain or part one of this series, um, we talked about a lot of this. So if you want to kind of get caught up on that, you can go back and watch that show. Okay. So Wiley Cat, uh, if you take glutathione on its own, does that help? I love that question. That's a great question. Um, Glutathione is very, very tough to absorb from the GI tract perspective. So if you're taking oral glutathione supplement, it generally is not absorbed very well. This is why N-acetylcysteine is used in a lot of clinics and a lot of doctor's offices. N-acetylcysteine, as science has shown, that taking N-acetylcysteine increases glutathione. If you're taking glutathione as a supplement, it's not the same thing as taking N-acetylcysteine. And remember that these impacts and these effects are as a result of N-acetylcysteine, not as a result of glutathione. So that doesn't mean you can't take glutathione. It just means that if you're trying to get the benefit of what we know from research that, that uh, N-acetylcysteine can provide, then you want to take N-acetylcysteine and not glutathione. Um, I like some of the comments I'm seeing. So works better with nebulized and inhaled as a, as a mucolytic agent. It does. So if you have a nebulizer at home or if your doctor will prescribe you a nebulizer, a lot of times when people have the severe respiratory infection, the nebulizing in acetylcysteine is the way to do it is you put it in a nebulizer where you can breathe the, the nebulized uh, steam into the lungs and, and get it directly into the lungs. Now, research shows that high enough oral doses also work, but if you can nebulize it, that's an even better, uh, better effect. Let's see here. Uh, Dickerson Chester wants to know, should you use it all year long or um, during the flu season? I'd say start using, I mean, you know, again, we're, we're talking about what are we talking about using it for? We're talking about for, you know, supporting your immune system in, 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 in case of a viral uh, outbreak. For me, probably until we know more about what's going to happen with this coronavirus and, and what, you know, whether or not the cases that are reported in the United States are going to start spreading and we're going to start seeing, seeing that increase. I'm going to be, I can promise you, I'm going to be taking that until we know something more or until this thing goes away. But in a general year, without a greater fear or without a greater worry about something like a coronavirus, just typical influenza, just you, you know, taking it during cold and flu season is, is adequate. So when does that really start? It kind of, kind of at the think about it at, at when school starts and the kids go back to school and we got all that mass germ sharing that begins, and then they start coming home and sharing all that germs with all their families, and then everybody's getting together during the holiday season. So kind of think kind of mid September all the way through the winter sometime to late February to March as a, as a time frame, an ideal time frame to take it as a supplement for support. Can bre pregnant and breastfeeding women use it? Yes, they can. That's a great question, Donna. It's, it's, um, there is no research that shows a detriment of N-acetylcysteine uh, in pregnant women. So that being said, it's always a great idea to talk with your doc about it, but there's no research that shows there's any kind of detriment and it's actually considered safe for pregnant breastfeeding. 
Let's see, Linda, would it be helpful and maybe even better for cold sores than Valtrex? Um, my favorite natural supplement for cold sores is Virid. I know you've maybe heard me mention that a few times, but I like Virid better because, um, because it contains L-lysine, which is another amino acid that helps prevent viral replication. Uh, combined with when you, when you combine that with higher doses of vitamin C, it works like a charm. So uh, I, my advice for a cold sore fever blister would be something like that over an N-acetylcysteine. What are the side effects of N-acetylcysteine? There really aren't any known side effects outside of you start getting that dose up high that you can have some nausea or gastric distress. So it just really, it, it's, it's a more of a GI side effect. Um, but there aren't any, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like B vitamins. There aren't a lot of side effects for most people taking B vitamins, not a lot of recorded side effects of N-acetylcysteine as well. Okay. Oh yeah. So Tracy says, I just got the email for the show at 630. I noticed that it was sent at 502. That's why, you know, I've been telling you guys when you, when we send out our email, our information a lot of times is being suppressed. Like the powers that be, um, we don't want a lot of the information that we talk about getting out there. And so our information sometimes gets blocked. Sometimes it, it gets delayed. And so if you're not subscribed to all of our channels, you should be that way you can ensure you're not going to miss a future episode. So if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel directly, that's one way that you can do it. Another way is being on my email list. Sometimes the email doesn't get out uh, to you in time because it's being hindered or it's being slowed down. But if you're, again, it's redundancy. If you're on if, you, if you're uh, a fan of our Facebook page and you're also subscribed to our YouTube channel and you're also subscribed to our email, then that's going to increase the likelihood that you're going to get the message on time. But the other thing you can do is just mark your calendar every Monday at 6 p.m. And that way you, you know to look, for, um, to look for the show. Let's see here. Chocho, how can you increase your stomach acid? Um, well... It's not an issue necessarily of increasing your stomach. If you have low stomach acid, one way that you can increase your stomach acid is by taking away the foods that could potentially damage your stomach lining. Because this is where a lot of people are. They're eating foods either that they're sensitive to or they're gluten sensitive or gluten allergic. And so they're getting exposure and those foods are damaging the cells of their stomach that produce the stomach acid. So those are called parietal cells. And so when you're eating foods that can damage your stomach, and your stomach lining and it reduces your stomach acid number one way to improve your stomach acid is get rid of those offending food agents so that's step one and that's the most important step now there are other things that you can do um, you, there's a there's a supplemental to increase acid called betaine hydrochloride i have a, actually have a formula called ultra acid which can be very very helpful for um helping you digest some people also find apple cider vinegar taking a, a teaspoon or two teaspoons before a meal about 10 minutes before a meal it, it's it's got an acidic nature to it so it increases slightly it puts a little bit of acid on your stomach so again that can help with your digestion as well so those are two strategies for you chucho Let's see here. Not a question. Yeah, so some of you chiming in and talking about you know, one of the problems with, with getting an infection is, is the, like a viral infection is the secondary problem that comes after that. So if a virus takes you out or takes you down, Usually influenza is pretty rough, puts a person in bed for a couple weeks. Um, the secondary risk that comes along with that is as your immune system is battling and trying to fight the virus, is you, it's a lot easier to pick up a bacterial infection or a secondary infection. And so then that can lead to more complications. And this is where people really get in trouble is not just the virus itself, but it's the secondary opportunist bacteria that can also take a role. And so from that perspective, if we're talking about immune system protection and immune system prevention of bacteria, uh, then a good probiotic can be very helpful in that case. Uh, in this case, I would recommend a really strong one like ultrabiotic defense. Let's see here. Let's see, Marie wants to know, can this amino acid help with asthma flares due to excessive mucus since this amino acid breaks mucus? If so, what would be the recommended dose and supplements? Thanks. 
Yeah, so same recommended dose. If you're looking at, at trying to use N-acetylcysteine to kind of help break mucus down, I'd look at somewhere between starting out as a ther kind of a therapeutic dose, 1,500 to 2,000 milligrams a day taken orally. If you've got a nebulizer and you can, you can nebulize that uh, N-acetylcysteine, that's even better uh, because it'll get directly into your lung. Uh, what is the youngest age to take in acetylcysteine? I, I would say, you know, again, this is my experience in my practice. You know, I've given in acetylcysteine to kids as young as two. Now, again, you got to adjust. This is an adult. You know, these doses that I put up here, these are adult doses. Generally speaking, 100 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So you can take a baby, you can take a baby's weight in kilograms and you can make an adjustment and, and you can look at that. And, you know, for babies, it's, you know, if they're eating, you can mix the powder in something like an applesauce or you can puree it in something like a, um, like a smoothie. Um, and where do you get in acetylcysteine? I think we put up a link, uh, uh, Dawn, uh, or I can't, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right, Kine or Keen. Um, but, but that link should be in the feed for you as far as um, where you can get a good quality gluten-free resource on N-acetylcysteine. Let's see here. Dwayne says, I have sinus drainage 24-7 and stuffing of the nose, probably due to my autoimmunity. I regularly take NAC. What was the name of your brand again? And is this something I could try? So yeah, Dwayne, you can just go to Gluten Free Society and 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 look and just type in the search engine Ultra NAC, and that'll pull that up. Now, if you're struggling really with a lot of sinus issues, I have another formula too called Ultra Sinus Support, and that one might be more up your alley. Now it has Ultra Sinus Support has N-acetylcysteine in it, so um, it contains N-acetylcysteine, not these higher doses, but it contains other agents that can also help kind of clear out the mucus drainage and support healthy sinus function in that way. So you might also consider something like that. Um, so RH wants to know, would NAC work for shingles? Again, sh not a lot of research on that. I would use if I'm looking at shingles or if I'm looking at uh, ulcers, fever blisters, I would go more toward, if I were using a supplement, I'd go more toward Virid and combine that with high doses of vitamin C. Virid has vitamin C, but I would add an additional five grams of vitamin C to that Virid as a, as a um, mechanism to help support your immune system through that. Let's see here. What brand of NAC? Um, Origins Wellness Formulas is the brand I recommend. Again, that's that's the reason why I recommend that particular brand. Uh, you can go to Gluten Free Society and pick it up is because uh, everything that, that we produce, that we formulate, manufacture is absolutely gluten free. And so a lot of a lot of supplements have fillers, hidden gluten in them. And so those of you, those of you that follow me for any length of time know I'm passionate about the gluten free diet. If you've read my book, No Grain, No Pain, you know. Uh, you know why I want to make sure that all of our formulations don't contain that gluten in it because that gluten can be one of the things that creates the inflammation. Okay. Foods that are high in N-acetylcysteine, I mean, one of the best sources of dietary cysteine is meat, simply put. Uh, but if you're vegetarian uh, maybe in, in, and not vegan, you can get it from egg. Um, you know, outside of that, you can get it from the, some of the sulfur containing cruciferous vegetables. Um, but those are going to be your, some of your best food sources for it. Let's see. Nancy wants to know, uh, what do you think about traveling by airplane April with the coronavirus going around? Um, I think it's a decision you got to make. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't want to be an alarmist and say everybody go run for the hills and hide from the coronavirus. But at the same time, um, I want to be a realist and say, look, let's do everything we can to give our immune systems the ability to protect us from the potential of it. So does that mean not traveling? Possibly it does. I think it, the big part of that depends on where you're traveling and who you're traveling with, uh, where in the world or where you're going in the world. Uh, so obviously, if you're traveling somewhere like China, I might say that'd be a trip I'd want to cancel. But um, 
you know, depending on where else you might be traveling, I'd say it's got to be a, an individualized decision that you make. Um, but, you know, if you're if you're already sick, uh, traveling is already probably a bad idea. Chris wants to know um, what can be a replacement for niacin. Niacin's vitamin B3 and there isn't one. Um, now, some people can't do niacin because it causes a flush at certain doses. Um, so there's a non-flush version of niacin called niacinamide, um, which if you take, um, you know, if you take our, our B complete, multi, our, it's a multi B vitamin B complete, it does have niacinamide in it so that it doesn't create that flushing reaction and that might be an option for you. Juan wants to know how to increase protein absorption. I think I answered that a minute ago, but I'm, I'm going to repeat it. So you take a supplemental acid to increase uh, your capacity at absorbing protein. Uh, you know, so that would be ultra acid would be the formulation that I would recommend there. Also, uh, taking apple cider vinegar might be helpful uh, in that regard as well. Uh, somebody wants to know, is, is beef collagen powder a protein supplement too? It is, but the amino acid profile, you'd want to really look at the amino acid profile of it. Um, it is, but most of your collagen supplements contain a lot of proline. They contain a lot of lysine. But as far as therapeutic doses of N-acetylcysteine, not so much. Um, so <clears throat> yes, it's a protein supplement. No, it's not going to contain uh, large quantities of N-acetylcysteine if that's what you're trying to get. Is glutamine and glutathione the same? No, they're not. Um, glutamine is a precursor to glutathione. Remember I said this earlier that glutamine, methionine, and N-acetylcysteine all work together to produce glutathione. So glutathione is made out of these three amino acids. So glutamine and glutathione are not the same thing. Can I drink Ensure as a way of replacing meat in my diet? Yeah, if you want to die earlier and poison yourself with corn syrup, please drink Ensure. This is a topic I probably should cover in greater detail. The drinks like Ensure and Boost and Pediasure, look, I think pediatricians and doctors who recommend these products should be locked in a jail cell because these products are poison. I mean, the number one ingredient in these products is corn sugar, and it's genetically modified corn sugar to boot. So now you get a healthy dose of glyphosate or Roundup, plus you get the corn sugar with a bunch of synthetic vitamins. That's not a healthy source of supplemental for your diet. If you want to take something in as a supplement for protein, I recommend, again, would recommend one of these things up here, like ultra protein or ultra pure protein. If you want something that's high quality, where, where it's organic and grass fed, and it's coming from the right place, right? So you can't remember, there's a golden rule of nutrition. You can't get healthy eating food that isn't healthy. And so when you look on that label, that Ensure, and you see right there, corn syrup, um, as, a, as a number one and number two ingredient, sugar, that, that tells you, it should tell you something about the health of that particular product. Sugar's not good for any of us. Uh, let's see here. How do you get it in a liquid for um, nebulization. So get with your doc and they can generally they'll prescribe it for you. Um, do you mix it with your albuterol? Again, get with your doc and they can prescribe it uh, for you. I don't know that I'd necessarily mix them together in the same nebulizer. I might do two separate nebulizing treatments to, to, to do that, but I don't think I'd mix them together. Um, for chronic viral respiratory inflammation, um, I, for that, I recommend uh, N-acetylcysteine, uh, but I also recommend, again, ultra sinus support. There's some ingredients in that that can help support lung function and lung inflammation. Uh, I'd recommend high doses of vitamin C, at least five grams a day for that as well. Okay, yeah, we talked about vitamin C a lot more in the last two episodes. So some, some of you having questions about that. Let's see here. Juan wants to know if I'll write a book about vitamins, minerals, and amino acids. Juan, you're on my living book every week when you come and visit the show. But yeah, we've got another book in the pipeline coming here pretty soon. Um, but... Um, it's, it's a timing issue right now. So yes, the answer to that question is yes. 
Um, how do I boost glutathione? I have a viral infection that leads to thyroiditis. If you want to boost your glutathione level, the number one way to do it uh, outside of injecting or IVing glutathione, if you get a doctor that does IV treatments, is really is to take N acetylcysteine at higher doses if you want to boost your glutathione. So, you know, a couple of grams a day is where I would start with that um, if you really want to get your glutathione levels elevated. Can NAC help pulmonary conditions? Yes, it can. Um, is glutamine and, and NAC okay for a 100-pound 11-year-old? Yes, it is. Um, let's see here. How do I know if I have low stomach acids? Uh, Ritu wants to know. There, Unfortunately, there's no great test to determine. So what? it's kind of think of it as, a, as an outcomes test. What, one of the ways that you can kind of look to see... Um, whether or not you're low in acid is to take betaine hydrochloride. So taking like, again, supplemental ultra acid and take two caps on an empty stomach. And if it doesn't create a warming sensation, then before your next meal, so several hours later in the, in the day on an empty stomach, take four. And if, and if you have to take more than four caps to feel kind of a warm sensation in your stomach, your, your stomach acid is probably low. The only other way to get a pH reading on your stomach is to have what's called a pH capsule endoscopy where you swallow one of these pills and that and that uh, capsule goes down and then it, it sends a message back to a computer that tells you what your stomach pH is. The problem with those tests is they're not... Um, your, your pH in your stomach can change to a certain degree depending on whether you're getting ready to eat or whether you're, um, you're, you're not eating. So like when you're smelling food, there's a message that goes to your brain that tells your stomach to produce more stomach acid in anticipation for that food. So part of the getting an accurate read on those pH endoscopy tests is your transit time can affect it. Uh, and then and then again, whether or not you're, you're getting ready to eat or not eat can affect the level of pH that that pill endoscopy is uh, measuring. So it's really hard. There's not really any great, super great technology to measure pH of the stomach. Tracy wants to know, is NAC overkill if I'm currently taking viroid vitamin C and vitamin D? No, uh, it's not. And I'm actually currently taking those things as well, but I'm also taking NAC. So no, it's not overkill, not in the least. Can you buy NAC online? Yes, Sandra, you can. I think we've put that link up in the feed for you already. Um, somebody said buy at Walmart. If you want to get a really poor quality, really um, potential for dangerous fillers, then buy it at Walmart. I don't, you know, and this is not me saying I have an anti Walmart message, but if you're talking about high quality pharmaceutical grade supplements, the place to buy those is not Walmart. Um, there was a study actually published, I think it was about three years ago, where they pulled products off the shelf at Walmart and tested to, to, to compare the label versus the actual ingredient and found that several of their products didn't even contain what was on the label. So I don't recommend buying. You know, with supplements, it's one of those things you get what you pay for when you're buying from Walmart or Target or, you know, some of these other discount stores, you're going to get a discount version that might be um, not super high quality and might contain fillers and might not actually even contain the active ingredient that it states that it's supposed to contain. So, you know, in that kind of scenario, you, you get what you pay for. Can a person with uh, Staggert's disease take the high dose of vitamin A that you suggest? But my advice with that kind of thing is if you have, you know, an existing disease condition, it would be to, to get with your doctor and have a conversation with them. Uh, because, it, again, it's a little bit too, it's too detailed for a form like this. I don't want to tell you yes or no because I don't know the, other, the rest of the history about what's going on with you. So... Um, work, working with your doc to, to decide what's right for you is, is probably the best move to make there. Can high doses of B-complex make hot flashes worse? Not generally, Sandra. I, it's not something that I've seen uh, as a complication of B-vitamins, so there's probably something else going on. As a matter of fact, oftentimes high doses of B-complex makes hot, hot flashes better because it helps you metabolize estrogen more effectively and not the other way around. Um, for oral vitamin C, would my best choice be liposomal? Greg wants to know. 
No, actually, I don't like liposomal, and here's why. It goes back to who I am and what I've seen, you know, clinically for the last 20 years is that liposomal vitamin C, pretty much every one I've ever looked at, is, deri is derived from a corn-based ingredient. And so my message being no grain, no pain, uh, I do not recommend liposomal. Now, there are research studies that show it's very effective at being absorbed and it can really elevate vitamin C levels, but I like vitamin C powder. There's a brand called Detox C that, that I would recommend, and it's, uh, it's a vitamin C powder, high-potency powder. Um, with no corn or other grain-based fillers. Let's see, Marie wants to know if we could share the link from the last show on viruses. If we could put that up, that'd be great. Um, let's see, would, would uh, Ethan wants to know, is N-acetylcysteine good for emphysema if used in a nebulizer? Potentially, yes, but again, I'd get with your doc and see if they could prescribe that to you. Um, let's see, should vitamin C be taken with some citric, citrus fruit to boost its effect? No, not necessarily. Um, do your comments on Walmart mean we shouldn't even buy vitamin C there either? Yes, they do, Gene. I don't recommend buying cheap supplements. Um, some people would say that's because you sell supplements, Dr. Osborne. It's not at all because I sell supplements. The reason I sell supplements is because in, in, in my environment where I'm seeing people in a one-on-one -on -one basis in my practice every week, if I send them to Walmart and what they buy at Walmart they think is vitamin C, for example, and we put them on that and they're taking that now for six months and then when they come back and we're retesting them and they're not feeling any better, now we've lost six months of time and it's possible they weren't even taking vitamin C in a great form, or it's possible they were taking vitamin C that was oxidized because of the way it was produced. And so they were actually taking not an antioxidant, but they were taking a free radical. So it's very important that when you're looking at supplements, you look at supplements the way you look at your food. You buy high quality food. You don't go get the 59 cent taco at Taco Bell, but you actually, if you want a taco, you know, you go buy all natural ingredients that are organically produced. If you're buying the meat, it should be grass fed. You're looking for the quality. Remember, quality in equals quality out. And, and again, if you're getting supplements at, at, at what appears to be a massively cheaper cost, there's a reason why it's cheaper. Now, perfect example, Centrum. If you ever buy Centrum or one a day as a multivitamin, you know, I think the last time I looked at this, I actually had a friend that worked there. And I think the raw cost of the product, in other words, for them to produce it was like eight cents to produce a whole bottle of that product. Well, I mean, half of that's the label and the bottle. So it means that the actual ingredients is four cents worth of quality ingredients in that product. And now they're selling that bottle for eight or nine dollars. And it's cheaper than say a, a really high quality, really great multivitamin like ultra nutrients, but it's not cheaper because what you're getting for your money is nothing. Whereas you go and buy something like an ultra nutrient, you're getting a really high dose is really high quality and you're getting pharma uh, you're, you're basically, you're getting pharmaceutical grade therapy grade supplements. And you don't, you don't want to cut corners when it comes to that kind of thing. If, especially if you're sick and you're trying to overcome it by supporting your body's nutrition. Uh, another one I, I saw just is, because some of you, are, there's some more of you chiming in is like Amazon buying supplements on Amazon. And, and this is, again, I shop on Amazon, but when it comes to supplements, I'd never buy supplements on Amazon. There was a study done about three years ago uh, where it was found that Amazon was actually allowing uh, different people to sell supplements, reputable branded supplements, like supplements from high quality brands, but they were counterfeit. They were knockoff versions. Amazon can't police that effectively. So this is just another reason why I don't really recommend buying from a mass you know, from a mass warehouse like an Amazon because they can't police whether or not the products are counterfeit or not. And they won't do it. They won't police it. Let's see here. Can enzymes heal the gut? Well, I mean, enzymes can help with digestion, uh, but what really helps heal the gut is not damaging it. I mean, the number one way to help your gut heal, remember your gut can heal every two days the lining of your gut's brand new. And the number one way to not continue to damage it is to not put in things that are damaging it. So knowing what you're allergic to, knowing what foods you should or shouldn't be eating and not eating what I like to call food, Franken food, right? Food under the guise, uh, fake food under the guise of real food. Uh, Tracy wants to know thoughts on 
colloidal silver. I, I like silver. Silver is a great thing, right? Like um, if you find yourself getting a sore throat, one of the best things to gargle with is actually liquid colloidal silver. Uh, it actually has antibiotic and antiviral properties, so it can be very effective. I, I do like silver. Um, Ron wants to know if we ship to Canada. Ron, yes, we do. Um, let's see here. Somebody asking about um, N-acetylcysteine and interstitial lung disease as well as vitamin C. Yes, both can, NAC and vitamin C can be very, very supportive of uh, lung health for somebody struggling with an interstitial lung disease. Remember, that's an autoimmune condition. So even more important than taking NAC or vitamin C would be to figure out what the triggers are for the autoimmune process itself. Or, uh, in my experience, for that kind of situation, gluten is, is almost always a culprit in that particular scenario. Okay, I think we just about got it all. We're definitely out of time. I think I went over a little bit for you guys. So here's the deal. If, um, if you like what we're sharing every Monday night, I need you to help me out. I need you to share it with somebody that you love or care about. Remember, our mission here is to save 100 million lives. And so if you could, hashtag save 100 million lives in the, in the uh, comment section for me. That helps us find and reach more people. Again, the more people we can help, the more normal healthy becomes and the less crazy people think you are for trying to be healthy, but more importantly, the more healthy people become, right? So make sure you subscribe. If you're not already, you can visit us over at glutenfreesociety.org. Sign up for our newsletter. It's free. We'll send you some awesome uh, information in a starter kit on how to go and start navigating the gluten-free diet. Additionally, make sure you subscribe to my channel on YouTube uh, to get updates and to get notified when we have new videos. We've got about seven new videos that come out every week helping educate you. Thanks for joining us tonight. It's been, uh, it's been a pleasure spending my Monday evening with you. Wishing you excellent health. We'll see you next Monday, same time. Take care. Hey, if you've got a functional medicine or health question that you'd like me to answer for you, make sure you send me an email, glutenology at gmail.com, and we'll do our best to create a video answer just for you. Have a great day.